Now they've kind of tamed it down, which is in the Sims community everyone's complaining about, I feel like. The but Sims community? <laughs> the Sims <laughs> Discord is not happy about this. No, because Sims used to be like inappropriate. Oh, incredibly like, inappropriate. That's what I used to love. Too? I remember there's all the mods to get like them that naked. Anymore. Like I was just like, yeah! <laughs> I think we got it. Nami Wager, because I'm Tommy. I'm not Tommy. I'm Nick Major, and he's Tommy Wooldridge. So that's how we write our names on the slate. Nice. And Leah, I noticed the spaces between each letter. Yeah. Why the spaces? All right. Well, I mean, there is already a Leah on Spotify. I'm aware. Yeah, and, and she's a really awesome German, I believe, artist. Super big there. <laughs> If you type in Leah, there's like a ton of people that come up, but she's the top one. Okay. So I put the spaces. I used to be Leah, lowercase l, and then E-A, like how you would spell it, like when you write it on like a test in elementary school. Um, but then I changed it. <laughs> and yeah, now it has spaces, and I had too far deep in to change it there's again. No so there's no going there back now. There's no going back. There's no going back now. By the way, I just saw your post about your hair. Wait, is it Flamingo Lounge? Yeah, I started going there too, yeah. Because that's where, remember Devin? Devin goes there, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's where she gets her hair done. Oh, I sweet. So my hairstylist, shout out Jessica Ruby, Flamingo Lounge. Go get your hair done by her. Um, she's amazing, and we're also, we've just become really, really great great friends. Jessica Ruby's like following everybody that like is mutuals in in the like scene and in LA and just like doing a crazy amazing job with her awesome. hair. She's gotten my friend uh Ray from Rose Color World's hair. Well, Nice. Too, and I'm like, I mean, everybody. I went to her page. So I just saw like personal friends that were on there. So yeah. Killing it. She's so good. And your EP is about to drop. Yeah. At oh 9 p.m. tonight. Tonight. Oh, yeah. Because it goes on East Coast times. Uh, yeah. Midnight. So how I, exciting. I'm I'm excited. It's been a long time coming. Honestly, these songs, I feel like I've been working on for over a year. Yeah. Because I think you started dropping some of them what, last June or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it might have been. Was it last June or was it but the year before? No, I think it was last June. Yeah. So I don't even like, know. Time flies. I, I couldn't even tell you, but it's just been a long time coming, and I'm so excited because it's about to drop. Mm -hmm. So finally. happy, never ending. Yes. That's so, the look, name I have of a it. tattoo. Of oh, you got it on your hand. Oh, that on one looks pretty hand. fresh too. Yeah. Well, kind of. Yeah. I mean, you could still read it, which is great. Did that hurt? Because like, so my tattoo, when it got down to here, it was a bit brutal at times. Because the, right the, right the bone. Yeah. No, this didn't hurt at all. This felt like nothing. Oh, it's so my well fingers, done too. My fingers like hurt too. Yeah. This my tattoo. Sydney Smith, shout out. She's amazing. She's based in Jersey. Um, but I, I go home to Jersey to, to, do it. to get my tattoos. Yeah, sometimes. so you're from New Jersey? Yes. So Jersey Shore is one of my favorite shows of all time. <laughs> Whenever you say that, are people like, Jersey Shore, Jersey Shore? Well, I have to tell people that's where the show is from for them to know where I live, because that's like my hometown. Not Seaside, but Point Pleasant. So every time someone says, Jersey, yeah, I don't really know that. I'm like, just the show. And yeah. then that's exactly where I'm from. Because I'm from Reno, so Reno 911. Oh, the show, everyone yeah. is always like, oh, Reno 911. I'm like, well, that wasn't filmed there. But I know Jersey Shore was filmed there, because one time when I was on Warp Tour, we had an off day right at that pier. So like I went and took a tour of the house. I yep. went and like it was the coolest Classic thing ever. I went to the, the shop. <laughs> yeah, the t-shirt shop, which I realized too that the house is literally right at the back of the shop. And so now when I saw Snooky running late to work, I was like, Did what? you? It's no, oh, no, not in real oh. life. In the show. In the show. In the show. <laughs> I was like, when wow. I saw her going go, showing up late, I was like, What girl, you're like a ten step walk to get there. I know. When the did you come out to uh, LA from Jersey? Oh, in twenty eighteen I moved permanently at the time and then uh yeah, I, before that I was there in like every three months, you know, I'd come back and do like internship stuff with like college. It was right when I was graduating. So mm -hmm. what were you in college for? Music oh, and communication. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So 2018, you were putting out music then, but it was a different vibe. It yeah, different it, it was very Hawaii. different. I never meant to hurt myself. I never meant to hurt your ego. I drink to forget all my problems. But why not calling you instead? You yeah. had 
Yeah. Was it damn sexy? Was that that, that one's not even out anymore. I took that oh, off the <laughs> DSPs. It's still on YouTube because I'm very proud of that lyric video, but like I just pretend that did not happen. I'm gonna make you believe. Definitely a different sound from you. It was kind of yes. uh, more indie, poppy-ish. Yeah, I, I like chill. to call it California beach pop because okay, I have this I like crazy that. obsession with like that type of music, like surf rock. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that before things got like super pop, and then honed in on pop punk. Here to stay. And I think was the first track that you did that really kind of showed off some pop punk stuff. The lollipop cover. Oh, That was the one that, that went really hard. That kind of like, because I had Jersey Boy that I released in 2021, I believe. I'm throwing pebbles at your window. I'm tossing rocks at your door. I tried to play it cool, but I don't, I don't care anymore, anymore. Yeah. And that was me kind of hinting and like doing a nice transition from like, you know, the little like pop rock into a bit harder stuff, but then Lollipop just like right out of left field. Completely. Which is fun because you kind of rewrote the perspective of it. A little bit, yeah, yeah. It. And that was really fun. But it is funny to hear you say some of the lyrics in that song when I was just, because it's such like a dirty song. <laughs> and when I was listening to it, I was like, okay. I don't think anyone expected me there. to drop something like that because that's just not like really in my brand to like, I don't know, put out something <laughs> that vulgar. But yeah, whatever. It was really cool. So what were you uh, growing up listening to? I mean, you're in, you're doing the pop punk now. I have a feeling that's more kind of what you were listening to. I mean, when I was growing up and still so, Mayday Parade, big fan. I discovered them myself. Like my friends usually would show me music and I would, um, you know, cling to that but Mayday Parade was something that like was like a little self-discovery so I was shout out Jersey in a song yeah honestly maybe that's why Jersey just got colder and I'll have you know I'm scared to death that everything that you had said to me was just a lie until you laugh I don't know how I found them that's that's crazy but you know lesson in romantics obviously iconic album one of the best albums of all time of all time oh my God. on my top yep all time that and secondhand serenade because tonight will be the night that i will fall for you over again don't make me change my mind which i know like it's you know a little bit for the fall for you memes because tonight will be the night that i will fall for you but Every single like John Vesley song is incredible, and I was just like upset. I have his handwriting on my back. Like I was obsessed with oh, him really? growing up because that was like the artist that taught me how to write. You know, yeah, like yeah. like just listening to that as like a middle schooler, and like in high school and stuff. So those are like my top twos. Nice, that's awesome. Both bands that I absolutely love, and it's cool to see the direction that you've really honed in on, which is the pop punk side of yeah. stuff. And I love that it's kind of having a more modern day resurgence. The, the pop punk stuff so from much the radio to the just like the scene it's yeah so exciting and cool how does it feel to be dabbling more in that kind of music now that i mean it's a couple years in now that you've been doing it it feels right it yeah. feels like I'm, I'm finally doing the right thing i think i was just always figuring out my sound i had a friend like three or four years ago and this sticks in my head every single day of my life he was like I, your pop music's good, but your voice just doesn't fit it. And at first I was like, oh, that's rude. I'm literally releasing <laughs> pop music. Um, <laughs> but then now he's like in the back of my head every time I do anything. And I'm like, he was right. Maybe like you it, were onto it something. Just, it just fits better. I mean, I would do a lot of like classic rock shows in college and I would grow up, grow up listening to jazz and rock. So like that was the stuff I was singing in voice lessons and whatnot. But yeah, then it's like, taking all of that and like my love for pop music and then my love for like classic rock and pop punk was just like not like the middle ground i guess how many songs are out now from the ep as of us talking right now because it all drops tonight yeah right yeah <laughs> there's three already out and the ep is a five song ep i forget have you dropped uh like yesterday that's a that new one's one that one's out, right? coming out tonight i made you my only attraction when my head is so messed up it happens you may be so far away but can you love me love me like yesterday
So that one and Happy Never Ending are both the ones that no one's heard before. And they're both, I because I, like yesterday is a very different one. Yeah. It's softer, except for it's got some big hits in it. Yeah, like, I don't know what I would like. Would, would, would you genre, like, what would you call that? I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> it fits right in. Okay, It good. just kind of feels like the, the softer track of it all. Which it is, Which yeah. is great, yeah. That's like my real roots. Like, that's like the secondhand serenade inspired stuff. Uh, like, yes, on the guitar, 100%. on the piano. But, you know, I got to sneak those in there. I have one in my last EP, too. It's like, those ballads are just like the bread and butter to like my life but yeah <laughs> and then of course the title track you got mr kellen quinn on it of course of course how was that i love kellen he's such a good guy every time he pops up on a song i love it how did you guys get together for this track i mean he featured x honestly he has himself up there and he's been giving smaller independent artists like the opportunity to put their name out there and i'm very lucky that he you know was cool with my song wanted to work on it and the rest is history i mean he just the fact that he's giving a platform for like artists that listen to sleeping with sirens growing up is really incredible so i'm very grateful for that he's been awesome to work with um super efficient very kind always sharing and supportive yeah yeah even on my side the interview world side he's always so kind like to me to anyone i know to, if we want to chat he's like yeah let's set it up let's yeah. do it and i i, love, I that. love that man it's just, it's just so sweet that all around i always hear nothing but good things I, that's about all him. and it's actually open it's funny because i've met a few other artists that have featured him on their songs too and we found each other through that and now we call it like this little community and it's like well Kellen, Kellen community Kellen created that and now I have like the other artist Bimo Rouge that was on FTS I yes, he had a feature with Kellen that and that's song how I know is him. awesome by the way oh, thank and you he, he his vocals in that were great as so I good I know I am who I want to be it's so Last night I followed him on Instagram when oh, I was nice. just listening to the EP over and over and I was like, this guy's got a killer voice. Yeah, he runs Emo Night New Orleans. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah. So good. And so. you, speaking of Emo Night, you went down on a couple of the shows for the Emo Night Brooklyn. I was on it. Emo Night Brooklyn in Asbury Park, New Jersey. So yeah, I just did that one. Um, but I did Emo Night Nashville and then I did a Sad and Bougie in Las Vegas for when we were young fest. Tommy, I don't know if you'd remember, but do you remember a couple of weeks back we were getting ready for Valentine's Day and then Eric was looking for graphics for inspiration and he found one with guns name on it oh yeah so, so that was the show that she was on actually oh. Oh. Guns, he's, he works at adobe as well yeah, yeah yeah and then we were looking for inspiration of how to brand some valentine's day cards and then our coworker was just like oh look at there's this one. Oh look guns name is on it and then oh I my was gosh like, oh, that's wait. the one from nashville right the yeah yeah, yeah that was a nashville i gotta one. shout out my friend ryan beck he designed that but i'll let him know that too oh, oh that's great yeah, we loved it we're like so this thing good. was awesome yeah. hell yeah i love that i know that before you were fully diving into the music stuff i know that you did a little series where you'd visited abandoned places oh it always gets brought up every once in a while and that's just like my favorite pastime. I want to get back into it so bad. Permanently closed is, is that what was it was the called? vlog series. Yeah. yeah, but it's like urban urban exploring or urbex oh. is like. The, and I, knew, I, Tom, I have to look that up. I love that. Yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you were just going to old abandoned like asylums. <laughs> yeah, it which is crazy because I see videos of that stuff all the time, and I was in like I know I think L.A. is a great spot for that stuff. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've looked much out here. It is and it isn't. The security is like impossible. Also because everyone out here is trying to, I feel like anyone takes any opportunity they can if they're trying to film a short film or if they're trying to make some sort of like film based thing and all the places here know that. So yeah. it's not as easy. But, but like, I, I can shout out a place in, in, well outside of LA, Bombay Beach and East Jesus. Slap oh no, Bombay City. Beach, yeah. Yeah, that, those are all like connected to, Salvation Mountains right there too. They're all connected to each other. That was kind of like an urbex day I took with my roommate who I did the series with and I did film it but I didn't put it out because i was like now nah, this is dead but we went there and we got to meet all the local artists and the people that live there and they just build art in their towns there's one restaurant and they all have the uh like you know like the not the ping pong tables like when you, I, all i could think about is when you're setting up beer pong and the tables like in college <laughs> amen but they have those in their restaurant and they have the little tablecloths over them and like if you like 
bring a dollar you can sign it and put it on the wall oh that's cool and so that's like the restaurant there looks like there's just a lot of like history in those towns they're they're just off the grid and just talking to the locals is so so cool so that's something you could do in california but like all the places i've been to were on the east coast Mm -hmm. we got to go on adventure to it together sometime yes (laughs) i i've had such an urge lately and i always mentioned it just to go to like little small towns yes that's like experience the vibe of it oh my god that's like a weird random hobby of mine and i never know how to like tell people people that i love doing that but just talking to the locals like trying their food and going drink. to like the local bar yes and just chatting with the, like, i have such a passion for that it, it seems so cool <laughs> it, wait, is bombay beach that's what it's called that's one of them is yeah. that like the whole abandoned town that's yes like, yeah. i mean it's half abandoned so there is like a half of it that's like just in in like ruins i guess but they kind of turned it into like an art installation so that's they painted so it like a bunch of different colors some of them are still like you know left and have the room for that but that's also like the salt and sea is there too that's what i was thinking of yeah. salt and sea because is that where the, there's like a whole city yeah that that, got, i mean that's that, the, that, that's oh, like the, the same, same thing like they're oh, okay. all in that like vicinity it's all in that little area it looks so cool have you ever seen yeah. it tommy Mm-mm. you would be blown away if you saw this place because it's like all these houses and stuff that were built and like then it was just this city that got completely like they just disregarded it yeah. and so it's like a full-on post-apocalyptic looking but people city. live oh there God. too and that's where Which the I art didn't even was that you said that. and the tables and the restaurant like the one restaurant bar in town like i got a beer there and everything and i was like talking to the bartender and asking about it like that oh it was just we should cool go there experience. we should all go there sometime yes and yeah, film it sounds awesome. and we, so you filmed it but you didn't release it yeah but i just hadn't filmed in like two years and I all my gear was like from when I was like popping off on YouTube for my permanently closed series so like nothing was up to date I was so in the moment that I didn't really like look at filming it and I was like I'm just gonna trash this nope fair enough that means that <laughs> now we will go full production we're gonna bring all of this gear <laughs> yes. and we will go document the day and Tommy Incredible. will edit it because I don't want to thanks Tommy <laughs> but I did see the video that you posted in regards to your brother April 28th 2017 is a very special day for me and not only because i saw john bellion in concert for free i received a message from a very specific person that was not present in my life so you were adopted yes and you had a brother i have a couple siblings yeah oh wow and you the, the video that you posted was documenting you guys meeting for the first time yeah which was just a couple years ago I, honestly yeah what was it was it 2016 or 17 yeah yeah it was how was that because like i have siblings but i'm so close to them we right. all grew up together so when i saw that video it's just like such a surreal thing to watch happen on camera in the moment how did yeah. you guys get in touch? Are you guys still in touch with each other, I'm hoping? Yeah, we're still in touch. Um, it's been an interesting relationship. My like, and I don't mind talking about it at all. I, I love talking about my adoption story, like biological family, like meeting a lot of them. It's been a crazy journey that's still in the works. But yeah, my brother, Jesse, I kind of always had an idea about him my whole life. I knew there was other people involved, but like for some reason, I think it popped up like one time that my mom could potentially adopt him, but it didn't work out. And so I like hyper fixated on that most of my childhood and I was like I need to meet this this younger brother because I've always like dreamed of having a little brother I would like steal my friend's brothers and just be like yeah they're mine the first now. time she was arrested <laughs> she stole her friend's brother. no <laughs> no but I just I just I don't know I, I really wanted to meet Jesse and so I spent years like looking for information once I was 18 and in college I reached out to like people that would have more information but that wasn't really helpful I did get some like I got like my health history reports back which is dope because I always have to write like NA adopted on the like oh, the doctor's true. office I, like someone like, I wouldn't even think about that yeah but that's so true so I got that but they didn't really like give me much information about my brother so I kind of just did a, a search on him I would look up I don't know, like I would look up his first name and try like different last name variations, like different people, but I don't I didn't really have really any Anything information. Of- just first name only. One day, miraculously, I think it was because my biological mother kind of found me on Facebook years ago and was like creeping around. So I had access to her page and I was able to kind of snoop through. I'm only kind of making that connection. Maybe that's how I found him. But yeah, that one day, like in the video, it was like a John Bellion concert and I just get a message and I was like, no way, no way, no way. And then, yeah, the rest is history. I like spent time reaching out to him, getting to know him. 
I mean, I love him, but the boy's a little nuts, but he knows that. And he'll <laughs> say it to his it's face. It's all love. <laughs> yeah. I, has he been out to any of your shows yet? I don't think he's been to any shows. When I first moved here, I wasn't as focused on the music thing as much as I am now, but I did visit him a lot. He stayed with me a lot. That's um, great. I love yeah. to hear that. That's awesome. Yeah, so it, it was it was a cool experience. It's It's been a little bit rocky. It's not all like... I, I think I tell people in the comments all the time on that video because that's done really well too. It was actually my senior thesis project because I was doing like music supervision. That was? So like, oh, that's great. Yeah, so I'm not, I mean, I don't care about the money, but I'm not making any money off of that because I picked the songs that I wanted to put in the video. So they're all like, you know, songs that are on Spotify and stuff. And so um, people are just like, oh, I'm really excited. I get to like, I found my brother, sister, aunt, uncle on Facebook. I really can't wait to reach out. And I'm like, be careful. It's literally not, like, don't glorify it. Like, it is tough it is emotionally traumatic honestly like the things you'll find out the like relationship that you're trying to build like this is a brother and like a person that you're supposed to know your whole life but you don't so you feel like they are something to you but they're literally nothing they're nothing at all so like it's very weird and it is because you're like it's my brother 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 but at the same time it's someone who has lived their own life and you've yeah. lived your own life and you have this idea in your head and i had expectations the yeah. and they were not met like those they it, it isn't like we didn't have this amazing bond right off i did with my sister at first that was like incredible but that just like died out real fast no idea why maybe never know but yeah i, I had a, this expectation it just was not met but it's something like i'm learning to deal with and i love him for who he is so i'm not mad at him for not being like your average what is he like uh, i should know like 23 year old whatever you know like he's just very out there and outspoken but as am i so i shouldn't be too shocked there's but. this documentary called three identical strangers his eyes are my eyes are my eyes are his eyes and it's true and then the story went from being amazing to incredible it was an article to twins reunited i think i might be the third and it i think it won an academy award it was at least nominated it is so amazing and you should yes. check it out it's oh so you've seen it yeah it's incredible it had me hooked it's about these triplets that back in like the 70s or something they were all adopted and they didn't know of each other's existences at all how old has, how long has it been out for <sighs> maybe four years yeah four i might have years. heard about it but i haven't seen it because i was going through a phase of like looking up stuff like that i, oh, like, I want to feel the it. same thing like it was so yeah. insane because and that was back in like before the days of social media right. and it was these three identical triplet brothers who found out about each other and then they all found one another inadvertently. It was an insane story. So I saw you were teasing that you had a big announcement today. Yes, I could definitely no. announce it. Spill it because <laughs> this won't be out by, the, by today. Um, so I'm playing a showcase during South by Southwest for Smart Ooh, Punk Records. Nice. That and I have a, a my one of my songs, pop songs, Get Over Yourself. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. is featured in a uh, short film um, called Funny Face, I believe is the name of it, that is going to be playing as well during an actual South by Southwest festival. Oh, nice. Do you have any tours that you're currently working to, to lock in? Is there anything that you can say? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything just yet. Um, I know it's like on the 2023 bucket list. I am moving to Nashville in June, so I'm oh, gonna- for, You're leaving LA? Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, you spent some time in Nashville? Yeah, he lived there for a while? Yeah, for four years. Oh, okay, did yeah. you like it? When was it? Because it depends um, on the time period, 20, I feel. 2008 to 2012, hmm. so it's I feel a while like ago. It was very but different then, wasn't Franklin, it? Franklin, Tennessee is closer to where I was, which is yeah, uh, yeah south of Nashville, but such a cool area. Yeah. Everyone says the best things about it. I was just chatting with Maddie Mullins from Memphis Mayfire. He lives out that way. He loves it. It's such a good music spot. When are you heading out that way? In end of May, early June. Damn, so that's coming up. Yeah, so that I said that because it's like I want to plant myself there. That way I'm ready for a tour because it's easier to tour you know, east if you're already kind of near there. But yeah, and there's so many there's so many good markets up yeah. there. Just like big markets that you can hit, which is great. And now that the EP's dropping, it's gonna be the perfect time for you to start getting on more radars. For yeah. You to start doing shows. Exactly. And I have more stuff in the works, so it's just like all of all of that, hopefully hopefully it'll It'll make a tour happen. Are you going to be driving out that way when you move? I think so, yeah. Just come on, that'd be a little cross-country tour. Yeah. You could be well, stopping by those little local bars in the cities. I will be. Just absolutely. Bring a With my mom and my cat. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that, that's how we're traveling, but we'll have like hotels and stuff. Your but... mom must have a blast watching this music stuff that you're doing. Because yeah. I saw you guys in the car when the local radio station 
was playing yeah. your stuff. Joining us over the phone once more is Leah. Don't miss her at E1I Brooklyn at House of Independence in Asbury Park on Saturday, August 27th. Leah, thank you so much for calling in all week. Thank you so much for having me all week. I am so stoked to be here. So sick. Oh I saw gosh, you in the, the newspaper, obsessed. the local paper. So cool milestones, I feel like, are being checked off the list so absolutely, far. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, my mom was crazy in a good way when that newspaper came out. I called her. I was like, go find the star ledger and she's like all right like running around town like picking up copies of it and like she like mailed it to me and like laminated like you know the, some of the pages of it and she i was tattooed like tattooed oh it God. on her back she's <laughs> like we're going all out baby so that was really cool yeah she's been an amazing supporter of my career but yeah a lot of little milestones that are like building up it's it's like all happening and that's really exciting oh and i saw you got to get some uh early access to nintendo world hey guys come with me to early access of super nintendo world World at Universal Studios Hollywood. Yeah, which looks so sick. It's up at Universal, not fully open to the public right now. I th- I is it? it? It did some opening on February seventeenth. Oh, but really? I don't know. Okay, so that was like last week. So maybe it, it is. It might. It might be open. Yeah. How was it? Was it cool? Because it looks so dope. I loved it because everything looked like you were literally in a game. I felt like I was like literally sleeping and in a dream and it wasn't real life Mm -hmm. i think the downsides of it i had no idea i needed those power-up wristbands which were kind of expensive so i didn't get to do any of the interactions on the walls and so they make you pay for a wristband so you can interact kind of like harry potter world like the wands i've never been there Oh, the butterbeer is so I need good. To go. I ha- I've had the butterbeer because at CityWalk, they sell oh, like yeah. a butterbeer. But you're a Nintendo fan? You got a Switch. You went to Nintendo World. Yeah, I'm like strictly Nintendo. That's kind of my thing is like I, ca- I, I maybe I'll buy another system, but I kind of like like i kind of i don't i kind of don't want to because i love nintendo no, so yeah. much nintendo's great what are your favorite games or even growing up because uh yeah we grew up in some of the best times where video games were really coming to yeah i mean my favorite games were like probably super random i not like well nintendogs isn't random i played nintendogs like mario kart growing up that's like nintendogs big, is Yoshi's- a way of life Exactly. Yoshi's Island. My favorite like Nintendo DS game was probably Herbs Sims in the City. That thing changed my life. It was so fun. I used to love the Sims games so much. I forget because I didn't have a computer growing up. I had a GameCube. And they mm-hmm. had one of the Sims games on that. Yeah, the GameCube Sims games are fun too. And I loved it. The handheld ones, they have storylines. That's what's because I love Sims, but the ones that like came, you know, growing up on this on the DS and the Game Boy and stuff like had really cool storylines, so I was a really big Sims fan. Still am, but God, mine would have been dark storylines because I always ended up stranding my people in the pool. But it's but you don't you don't play it like that down. on like on the on the handheld handheld oh, consoles. Like they got to go to work and stuff. You you got to like the the stories were weird. It it wasn't like kind it wasn't really kid friendly. Even though I was a kid playing, like they were just you know how like okay you know how Sims are very whimsical or how they like used to be just very like out there. Uh-huh. Now they've kind of tamed it down, which is in the Sims community everyone's complaining about. I feel the like the Sims but... community. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like nerding out. The but... <laughs> Sims Discord is not happy about this. No, because Sims used to be like kind of inappropriate. Oh, incredibly but, like, inappropriate. That's what I used to love. Too? I remember there's all the mods it's to get like them naked. Anymore. Like I was just like, yeah, good stuff. I guess we'll wrap it up by touching on the EP for Work the final more unhinged. The final moment of this before. I love when conversations get unhinged. How are you going to bring up Nintendo and The Sims without it getting <laughs> without getting unhinged? What are you most proud of on the new release? Putting out something that feels like the most authentically me. I always like have so much fun releasing music, but for some reason like this release just feels I wouldn't have gotten it tattooed on my hand if it didn't feel like You know, this was like not the rebirth of my music, but like just the start of something that feels like it could actually go somewhere. Yeah. Just getting the response that I've gotten in the past like six months to a year based on the music I've been releasing now has uh, never in a million years I thought I would get there. And I'm so still so early in my career. So to be saying that is really, really cool. So I think that's what I'm most proud of. And, uh, you know, just like holding on to a good thing and running with it and just keep keep pushing and keep going and seeing what I could do with that. Mm-hmm. Favorite track off of it? Oh, uh, I like them all so much. I think it, that's great. I love my own music, but um, <laughs> I want to say, I mean, I'm going to have two answers. I feel like happy never ending because when I hear Kellen on it, it doesn't feel like my song. And then I get excited. Cause it's like, I'm listening to something that I could be a fan of. <laughs> I 
I, you could be a fan of your own music, but when oh, we I listen you to be. it, like, over but I hope you guys again. get to play that live together sometime. By the I want to make it happen. I've like thought about. I've, I've even I think I've asked him one time doing like an emo night thing, but that would be super cool if we could play it live together one day. We'll see one day. But I love that song just because it's just it's just so happy, and I never get tired of it. But like yesterday, like that like. That shit hits. Good. It hits me. Like, that's like one of the first songs I wrote about a personal experience that I listened to to like get through that personal experience. I know you like my lips, but do you like what comes out my mouth? It's been a decade. Winter seems so far away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like I can't do that to my music too much because I hear it so much. But every time I listen to that song, I'm like, oh, yeah, I still feel that. Like, I still feel that energy and passion. What's the song about? Somebody. <laughs> well, it's about a person. Yeah, it's most of my songs are about people. Except no, yeah. FTS is like financial struggles and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, yesterday, it kind of like is referencing the Beatles song, like the Beatles song yesterday. Um, and I there's like a clip of when I sang that in high school and that's in the beginning of it oh is that what oh cool that's awesome yeah i it wasn't me playing it but it uh yeah so it's just like the storyline of just like treating me the way you've treated me before love me like yesterday throw love me like when we played yesterday like you know it stuff like that congrats on it releasing <laughs> that's so dope I'm, I'm i'm stoked for you i appreciate you stopping by we finally made it happen it was supposed to be last week oh then goodness. i had to cancel then it was gonna be then on I monday got sick and, and you had to cancel so we're finally here today. So, uh, uh, Leah, thanks for dropping by. Thanks so much, dude. Yeah. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. And this is fun. Happy Never Ending, everybody. Check it out. It is out now. Great stuff. And catch you next time.